props, props today. I'm full of props. Hi everybody, how you doing today? Doing good? We got six people, excellent. Soon we'll have more. Ah, I hope your week went well. Did anybody make cheese bread? I wanna see some reaction there. You're supposed to make it. Chef is gonna come after you. Hi, hi Tatiana, I love you. Hi Fernanda, hi Mara, hi Erin, hi everybody. Hi Adri, to the bone boy. All right, I have so much stuff going on today. Let me show the recipe again real quick. I'll show it again later, but you can take a picture. Are you making cheese bread tonight? I hope so. I wanna see pictures. Oi, Sonia, bem-vinda. Right, take a picture, write it down. I have news. Oh, I have some really exciting news. I'll repeat it in the end, but I'll start now. So, through my social media extraordinaire, Miss Erin, I figured out how to link my blog, which poor thing has dust notes and, and cobwebs, but anyway, uh, to my Instagram uh, page. So now, um, when you go to my Instagram page, you will see the link to the blog, and marvels of marvels, you click on the link on the blog, and you will see the recipes. Isn't that fantastic? Yes, Chef Alex in the 21st century, finally, who told you you cannot teach an old dog a new trick, right? So thank you, Erin, for showing me the way, and I was successfully um, proficient in attaching the file, so that worked out too. Uh, it's not the most, you know, modern blog ever, but it's okay, we'll do the job for now. Um, the point is to get the information out to you guys, and, uh, and that's what I wanted to do. And I don't like blabbing too much on blogs, so you will see this is the, you know, this is the recipe for the live demo so-and-so and so, a picture, and that's the end of it, and then you enjoy the recipe. Okay, so we're gonna get started because, um, you know, I don't want you to waste too much of your time, and if more people sign up, then fantastic. All right, so today we're making a um, pastry dough, or pie dough, or pie crust, or pie shell. There's a bazillion names for the same thing. But the trick here is that it's flaky. Now, I told you before, I'm not a pastry chef. So for me to do things that are from the pastry aisle, they need to be easy to remember, easy to make, foolproof. And, and, and that's what this recipe is. I got this recipe from my sister Fernanda maybe about 20 years ago. And I use it for everything, um, savory and sweet, tarts, pies, um, empanadas, rolls. Um, it's really versatile. But the devil is on the details, as you know. So the most important thing today that you need to get out of this class is the technique. If you get that wrong, you won't get a flaky dough or you will get a tough dough. So there's two very important things that you need to learn today is how to leave it soft and how to make it flaky so you have something delicious when you eat it. Cool? I wanna hear, yes, chef. Okay, good. So without further ado, I'm gonna start slightly different. First, I'm gonna, um, I kind of already pre-made two things with the dough that I'm gonna show you and I'm gonna stick it in the oven so we have a final product at the end because this is a live show so we can't wait for everything to bake. And then while that is baking, I'm gonna show you how to make the dough and then I'm gonna show you how to make the product. But the product that I make with you today will go in the oven but most likely will not be done by the time we are done. So, uh, very good, Fernanda, yes, chef. So, let me bring out what I have. I have a um, apple galette and some uh, cheese and tomato empanadas, kind of pizza empanadas. So hold on that thought, I'll be right back. So this is the apple galette, obviously has not been baked yet. 
So um, galette is this shape, it's a open tart, country style, very free form um, and very forgiving. It will be looking very pretty and if you had seen it when I first opened it, you'll be like, oh my god, this is ugly because I can't roll around dough for the life of me. But look at how pretty it's gonna come out. Uh, it has apples and uh, I will share the recipe with you later. Uh, it has cooked apples and raw apples. Inside the, the, the tart shell itself, it's diced apple that I saute lightly with some butter and sugar. Then I added dried cranberries because I'm just a cranberry addict. Um, and then I cooked them so that they would soften, number one, and that they wouldn't release too much moisture so the dough would not be soggy. And then on top is um, sliced apples. These are raw, okay, because you need that little crunch a little bit. So this one, and then here, oh, look at how cute. These are my cheese empanadas. Look, look at the fold. I'm gonna teach you how to make this fold. This is the left-handed fold, so yours is gonna be in the opposite direction, but that's quite all right. And these uh, half moon shaped um, pastries are called empanadas in the Hispanic world. This one is just filled with cheese and tomato because it was easier. You can make the traditional meat one that has currants and is a little bit on the sweet side and then serve with the chimichurri sauce and it's yum, 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 okay? So I have these two here. Oh, and very important, I'll show you that later. You probably cannot see that right now. And the only reason why I can't pick this up is because it's ice cold, but it has, a, you see the, the holes? So I prick them with toothpicks so that when they bake, they don't explode on you. But I'll, I'll go back to that later. So I have an egg here that I just lightly get up with a fork. Bye-bye. Um, a brush, silicone brush. I don't like putting egg in, you know, paintbrush kind of thing. And now I'm just going to lightly, and again, lightly, you're not dousing this to death, okay? You're just lightly brushing the egg all around. And then same thing here. And what it's gonna do is just gonna give it some color. It's gonna be beautiful golden brown and fantastic and perfect when it's finished. All right, so you see very little, guys. Very, very you wanna give it just that shine? I'm gonna put that egg here. For the, for the apple part, I have some sugar here. I'm gonna sprinkle some sugar around the edges so it gets nice and caramelized and brown. You could melt some butter and brush the apple with some butter and then put some sugar and cinnamon on top, but I thought it was overkill because you know, for me, the apples on the bottom are already seasoned. Oh, hi, Romina. Empanadas, yes, my, my sister-in-law is half Argentinian, sadly so. So, uh, joking. And so, empanadas for you. This are gonna go in a 375 oven, and I think between 25 and 35 to 40 minutes, depending here on the size, so I'm gonna start with 25 and see how we go, okay? Alexa, start a timer for 25 minutes. 25 minutes, starting now. All right, so now that that's, hi, I'm back. Now that that's out of the way, let's make the dough. It's so easy to make. First thing, this is a mathematical thing, and it's a one, two, three dough. And I wasn't joking when I said easy as one, two, three. It's a formula, and I love formulas because I was an engineer in my other life. So one, is your yogurt, two is your butter, three is your flour. So check it out. Four ounces of yogurt times two makes eight, that's the butter, times three makes 12, that is the flour. And then together adds to 24 ounces, so you will end up with 24 ounces of dough, which is a lot, it's, it's way over a pound, it's a pound and a half. So you can make a complete uh, pie out of that. It's very easy to cut it in half, it's very easy to double. Um, I don't double usually because it doesn't fit in my food processor bowl. Um, so, and then I don't, I don't like making it by hand. Um, but if you want to make it by hand, you can definitely do that. Okay? So we're going to make it from scratch. So here I have, I have half of your recipe because I have already um, pie dough out of the wazoo here and I don't want to repeat the same mistake as my cheese bread that I have it for the whole year in the freezer. So I decided to make just half half a dough, but I have it all pre-measured. So here is my flour, the yogurt, 
the butter, which has to be ice cold, this butter actually was in the freezer, and then salt. If you're gonna do sweets with it, like apple pie, or blueberry pie, or pumpkin pie, um, or even apple turnover, this kind of things, then you add a teaspoon of sugar. If not, just leave it as, the, as this, okay? So here, what we're gonna do is so easy, guys. If I can do it, you're totally gonna rock it. So here's my baby. This old fellow has been with me since California. It's 12 years old, I already bought it used. I love it to pieces. And when I run out of parts, I go on eBay and I find them. Um, so, the flour. Now here, for those who are gluten-free, again, you know who you are, just use your all-purpose gluten-free and do the same ratio. I've never done with gluten-free flour. I think the only thing that I would be careful is the resting time so it doesn't get gummy, but we'll talk about that later. I'm gonna add the salt. Pulse it two or three times to sift the flour and combine it with the salt. Put it a little closer to you. Now I'm gonna add the butter. So do you guys know why dough is flaky? What happens in it inside? I mean, cooking, you know, people call it culinary arts, but it's actually a science, right? It's got chemistry, it's got biology, and it's got physics. So this one. And today I'm putting Alton Brown to shame. But a flaky dough means you're gonna be cutting or shortening the gluten strands and the flour. So here's my drawing, yay, I hope you can see. So you see these little blobs with an F is the flour, the little blobs with the B is the butter. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut, that's the verb, cut the butter into the flour. So the butter shortens the strands of the flour. Therefore, it's called shortening. Not that, you know, yucky stuff that people use, but it's, it's the action of shortening the gluten strands. That will make your pie dough, one, soft, because you, wouldn't, you will not develop the gluten and get really tough. And the second thing is, as the butter bakes, you know, butter is like 60 to 70% water. So the water releases a little puff of steam, and then it blows up the distance between the, 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 the dough more like you, for lack of a better word. And you got the flakiness with the oil in between. Isn't that something? But in order for that to happen, in order for you to have this beautiful organized chaos in your dough, your butter has to be cold. All right. So, here we go. Eight ounces of butter, which happens conveniently to be one stick. So you don't even have to measure that. By the way, the flour, measure with the skill. Now, here is the trick. Do not press the button and let it rip because you're gonna end up with a warm butter. So you wanna cut the butter into the flour, which means you're gonna pulse it, I would say 10 to 12 times until you have a certain consistency, which is of sand. You know sand, dry sand, not wet. Dry, uh, dry sand in, you know, on the beach or, or coarse, um, flour, coarse cornmeal kind of do. So I'm gonna make noise, you count with me between 10 and 12. You can take the engineer, you know, you can't take the engineer out of the kitchen. So can you see how coarse it is? It's still some big blobs of butter and I'm actually gonna leave it like that. If you do this by hand, if you don't have a food processor, you would have a large bowl, throw the flour in there, throw the pieces of butter, and then I put gloves uh, to help not get oils from my hand in the dough. And, and you have to work fast. You start massaging it like you're washing your hands. We all know this motion very well right now, right? and you start breaking the butter into the flour, but you have to work very fast, okay? Otherwise, it all melts, you know, with the, with the temperature of our body. And now I'm going to add the yogurt. I use Greek yogurt, because I like it. Uh, you can use plain yogurt, it's, it's fine. It's, it has to be unsweetened and unflavored, please. Um, and what I do is I already kind of throw it in a couple of different places inside the food processor bowl. 
There you go. Woohoo! Oh, I love the smell of yogurt. I use yogurt in so many things. I love making ranch dressing with yogurt, tahini dressing. All right, so now is the only time that you're actually going to turn it on. And you turn it on until it forms a ball inside the, uh, the food processor bowl. And I'm going to already clean up my surface because we're going to go straight here. All right, are you ready? One, two, three, let it rip. So it's kind of mixing the moisture of the yogurt to the flour, and it's kind of nerve wracking because you think you're going to overwork it, but it's beautiful. Beautiful. There you go, it's coming together. Can you hear? One, two, three, stop. It came together, you stop. Oh, come on. There you go. Can you see? It made a ball here. The moment it made the ball, stop it. You do not want to overwork this dough, otherwise you're gonna have a tough, tough dough. Okay? So now I'm gonna put my faithful silicone mat. You should really invest in one. I have more than one. This is my pastry one, but I have the, the, other, one, the other one more famous that I won't name by names, but the day that they pay me endorsement, then I'll tell you the brand. No, I'm just joking. It's the, the seal pad. Okay, I'm gonna go again. I'm gonna put gloves here just because I don't like the oils, you know, even though the hand is washed and all that, I don't like it. And again, you're gonna work super fast because this dough is already warming up. Um, if there is any flour on the bottom, forget it. The dough didn't need it. Well, then we don't need it either. And bye-bye. So now here, no kneading needed. <laughs> no kneading needed. Oh my God, I'll eat their agents. So what I'm doing here is, this is about a pound and a half. So what I do to make my life easier is I get one of those uh, dough cutters. Really, this is called a bench scraper or dough cutter. It's fantastic, you should invest in one. I cut it in half. Everything that you do now will save you time when you go roll it up, okay? So I cut it in half. Or you could do two thirds and one third. So the one third will be the top of the pie and the uh, two thirds will be the bottom if you do like an apple pie, okay? And, and then I'm just gonna flatten it a little bit with my hand because when you go open it and you will see it shortly, this is already super easy. It helps you out tremendously. So now this dough freezes beautifully for up to three months. And uh, again, I dare you to have that sitting in your, in your freezer for that long. In order to freeze it, you wanna prevent moisture from going in and freezer burn. So the first thing you do, you do is you wrap it in plastic Then you're going to put some foil. Then you be smart about it and you're going to label it here. So I have one of these painter's blue labels that are amazing. So I'm just going to do pastry dough. And you put the date because you never know, right? You might have a lot of that. Or if you get inspected by the health inspector, haha, <laughs> they want to see date on it. Um, <clears throat> you have to do fine for the first thing, first out. And then you freeze the second one separately because again, you never know. That's why it's important to do portion control at this stage because later on you do not want to um, thaw everything out just to take a little piece out. Doesn't make any sense, right? So again, put the blue tape. So far so good. Any questions? Oh, if you, my other sister, oh, my family's in mass today. My niece, whom I love dearly, 
my brother and my two sisters. Base three dough, five, nine, 20. Now comes the last piece. Again, you wanna prevent moisture from going in, okay? And you wanna prevent freezer part. So now you do the last piece of plastic. Why, chef, didn't you put the tape on the last piece of plastic? Because it will come off with the moisture of the freezer, okay? So you put it on the, on the I'm actually gonna do it upside down. You put it on a, on, a, on a foil so that it's, you know, see through. Look at how pretty. Yay! Now, I don't know if you noticed, I do not put sugar. So this is a savory pastry dough. What I do is when I make the sweet one, then on the label I do sweet pastry dough. So now I know the difference. Can I make sweets with this one? Yes, of course. It's just a little, uh, the sweet which I made yesterday, you see, I just wrote sweet on it. Um, you can make an apple pie, you know, in a pinch, no problem at all. It doesn't taste, it doesn't taste salty at all, it's just that the other one tastes sweet. Okay, so this goes to the freezer. And I hope nothing jumps at me when I open it, because I have cheese bread here out of the wazoo. Okie dokie. Any questions? So, point number one, one, two, three. One part yogurt, two parts butter, three parts flour. You can make with the general purpose gluten-free flour as well. Uh, second thing, salt, and then it's just a pinch for flavor contrast, and then the sugar only if you're gonna do desserts with it. Otherwise, do not add sugar, and you cannot, no, you cannot add sugar later. Sorry, it has to be when you mix it. If you add the sugar, it goes in with the dry ingredients in the beginning, the flour and the salt, okay? Butter, unsweetened butter, please do not use butter that has salt in it. Unsalted butter, don't use butter that has salt in it. No, margarine is not an option, okay? Because it won't give you the same cutting effect that I showed here. So in order for you to have this beautiful sharpening effect, you need it to be real butter, cold, 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 and unsalted. Cool? Awesome. Oh, it's starting to smell here, by the way. Oh my God. Okay, so I'm gonna clean this. And now I'm gonna wash my hands and I'm going to show you how to make a couple of things. Again, this is an extremely versatile dough. For those who are Brazilian and ever, uh, ever had, you know, or you're not Brazilian, but you had empadinhas, you can use, even use this in empadinhas. It's not as, um, it doesn't break apart as the empadinha dough because it doesn't have lard in it. Um, and the ratio um, fat to flour is not exactly the same, but still in a pinch, you can make them. You can do savory tarts, you can do sweet tarts, you can do empanadas, and you can do galettes, and you can do roll-ups. So today, I'm gonna show you how to do a blue, blueberry vanilla galette that I already kinda had the feeling prepared. And then I'm gonna, I sauteed some ground beef, and I'm gonna do a beef and cheese roll-up, roulade, to show you the technique to roll it. And the last thing is the cheese empanada. So you'll learn the three techniques today. Cool? All right, let me wash my hands. in the supermarket that has provolone, mozzarella, uh, parmesan, and a bunch of other things. I love it, but you can do just with plain mozzarella. I had some mix already that I had put together. I have tomatoes that I took the seeds out, but it has the skin. You don't have to do anything complicated, just that the seeds add moisture and you do not want your um, dough to get soggy, so I have the tomatoes.
So the first thing I want to show you is the empanadas. Okay. So I have some uh, leftover of uh, leftover dough that I used this morning that is a little softer than the other. So I'm going to start with that and just kind of put them back together. Again, the consistency, if you remember what I said with the cheese bread, is like Play-Doh. This is the same thing. I'm not going to overwork it. I'm just going to put it here. And then you open it with plastic on top. If you do not have a silicone mat, you could have parchment paper, papel manteiga on the bottom. Or you could have more plastic, okay? So that it doesn't stick. Do not flour it, do not flour your roll, or you destroy the dough, okay? And I'm just gonna push it down. And this is a free uh, format. I just wanna open it so I can cut the, the cutouts for the empanada. So I really don't care. The most important thing here is the thickness and that there are no uh, areas of the dough that are too thick where other areas are too thin. So you move it around if you have to, your plastic. Oh, it's smelling amazing here. I think I'm gonna go, Alexa, how much time? You have six minutes and 50 seconds left on your 25 minute timer. Really? Mm, you know what, my nose is telling me there's something going on, so I'm gonna go check. Hold on a sec. Timer, three minutes, starting now. Thank you, okay. So, open, open, open. You gotta work fast. You see, I'm not exactly the best of those things. I'm very honest, I know my shortcomings. But the dough is starting to get um, really warm. Run your hand over it. If you find any bump, then you kind of smooth it out. But if there are no bumps, then you're all set to go. And now, cutouts. So I have like a, the largest cookie cutter of my inventory. If you have something bigger, even better. And here you wanna do cutouts and try to waste product as little as possible, okay? So do them close to each other and kind of go around. There goes the engineer again, trying to figure it out, you know. And I do save this, the scraps because you can use them for decoration. Woo hoo, okay, this was good. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, not bad. I'm gonna pull out the scraps. You with me? I'm gonna take this out of the way. And then I wanna see any question? Okay. So now, okay. It helps that I have small fingers, at least that. Um, I always see men struggling with it because they have big, beefy fingers. I'm gonna bring this a little closer, and I wanna actually bring you closer. So now comes, you come back here, I'm going to mix some of the cheese, some of the tomato, oregano, I do not add salt, I do not add um, olive oil because I definitely do not want any moisture inside that dough. The cheese itself has enough fat. And I know it's difficult because I was born and bathed in olive oil from an early age, but I have to resist the temptation. So now here, so the trick to a successful empanada is to not over fill it. I'm gonna move this out of the way a little bit and it's okay that they lose shape because I'll put them back in shape again. And I'm gonna do this, let me see. Can you all see this baby here? Alexa, you said stop.
is out. Second timer, 10 minutes. Can you see them? Now. Aren't they pretty? I'm gonna let them rest. All right, so a little bit goes a long way. You have to put your hands. Um, and then I'm gonna put my towel here because I'm gonna wipe a lot. Now here, here's the trick. So you're gonna pick it up, you know, hold the hold the filling, and then you make the half moon. So far, so good. Once you made the half moon, now you're gonna crimp it. So I'm left-handed. You probably are gonna come this way around. I'm gonna come this way around. So let me change the direction of the mat a little bit. So you pinch it down, and with this finger, you fold it over. Pinch it and fold it over. Pinch it and fold it over. You know the Mexican mamas do that on their sleep? Not just Mexican, Hispanic in general. Pinch and fold, pinch and fold, pinch and fold, pinch and fold. Ta-da! Delicate, because this is very warm right now. Let's put it here. Let's do it again. A little bit. Slightly off center, closer to you. Then you hold it and fold in half, press it down. This is this dough is there's so much butter in it that it kind of glues together. There's no need to put water, there's no need to put eggs at this stage. Pinch and fold, pinch and fold. And you're kind of overlapping the folds. Pinch and fold, pinch and fold, pinch and fold, pinch and fold, pinch and fold. Can you see it? Closer. Put the camera closer. My producer is saying I need to put the camera closer. Go ahead. Maybe you can hold it above. Let's see. If, there you go. Joe's is amazing, isn't he? The stuff that he has to put up for me. Oh, poor thing. Okay, hold and fold. Pinch, 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 pinch. Pinch and fold. Pinch and fold, 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 pinch and fold. And again, it's very forgiving. Okay? One more time. So far, so good. Fold it in half, press down. Pinch and fold, pinch and fold. Fold, pinch and fold, fold, pinch and fold, pinch and fold. Let me show you something. Another prop. Alexa, stop. So Starting now. this is what I'm doing. I'm putting the, can you move the camera back here? I'm putting the filling right here. I'm folding it. And you can practice it actually at home with the paper first. So pinch and fold, pinch and fold, pinch and fold, pinch and fold. This is an empapio um, technique as well. You could put a piece of fish inside a piece of paper like this or foil. And then you pinch and fold, pinch and fold, fold it at the end. You have the fish in here, you stick it in the oven, then you bake it and you have a fish and papillote. But this is super easy and you can practice at home with the paper multiple times before you get your hands in the dough. All right, back here, one more time. So now that you saw the giant size technique, let's go back. Hold it together, pinch it, press it down, pinch and fold, pinch and fold. Some people leave it, uh, cut it bigger and leave a bigger edge. I think it's a waste when I eat empanada, I want the filling. But you could have a bigger, you know, a wider edge if you wanted to, just by um, cutting it bigger. I don't have a bigger cutter. This is the maximum. Now I want to maximize the amount of filling that I have inside. So 
that's my take on it. Um, you can do whatever you want. As I said, you can make you can make all kinds of fillings. You could do again meat. You could do chicken. You could do all vegetarian. You could do uh, roasted uh, butternut squash. Um, the the trick here it has to be cooked. The filling needs to be cooked, and it needs to be dry. You do not want to put moisture in it. You know what? We're good. I'm gonna stick this. Alexa, stop. I'm going to stick this in the refrigerator, but before I do that, so they're not ready to go in the oven now, they need to rest, just like cookies, right? If they go in the oven now, the, the, the fat is going to ooze. Prick them with the toothpick a couple times to give it some air so it doesn't blow up on you. Boop, 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 boop. Pretty, pretty, pretty. In the, in the refrigerator, they go. So far so good? No questions? Okay, next. Sweet. So I have some blueberries. And what I did is I uh, sauteed them uh, slightly with butter and a little bit of sugar so that they could uh, release some of the liquid. And then I added cornstarch. Um, this is about a cup of blueberries and I added about a, a teaspoon of cornstarch. Um, and a squeeze of lemon juice. And uh, now I have, you could use vanilla um, extract, but I actually have a vanilla paste. And this is so sexy. I kid you not. A little bit goes a long way, okay guys? So I'm gonna take like just, like a little, little tiny bit. Also it costs a fortune. I know, I'm cheap, what can I say? Um, but no, seriously, it's just to give that contrast. The vanilla with blueberry is awesome. Mix it together. Now, it is, it, it looks wet, and I know it looks wet, but with the cornstarch, the moment it starts baking with the heat, it's gonna absorb the juices and tighten up, okay? So, I'm gonna leave this baby here, and then same procedure. Get the plastic and get the label out. Get out, get out. So I can reuse the plastic. Oh, no, I can't. Ah, I'm going to use this one. Put it here. Now, galette. The first time I saw galette on television, I fell in love with it because I have absolutely no talent or patience to keep opening pies and putting pie top and doing lattice cover. I'm very honest. I mean, if you like to do that, it's fantastic. And this dough makes a beautiful lattice um, pie, but it's not for me. I don't have enough patience for that. So what I, I, when I discovered galettes, I went on a galette rampant, and that's all I would make is galette, galette, galette of everything. Um, you can make galettes savory or sweet, the same way you do pie, savory or sweet. The only difference is in here is because it's open, okay? Your ingredients are gonna dry out. So you just gotta be careful. Everything has to be cooked. Um, you can do mushrooms with goat cheese and spinach. You can do fig with prosciutto and gorgonzola. You can do whew, uh, leeks with hearts of palm and cream cheese. Oh, the, it's, it, the opportunities, oh, you can do a ratatouille one with the tomato and the zucchini and the eggplant. Cut the very, 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 very thin. Toss them in olive oil and herbs. Those you bake with the, with the dough. Okay, so you open, so far so good, the same process, right? Like we did before. What? Oven what? What for the oven? Just say, take a look at the oven. Take a look at the oven, the oven is done, isn't it? No, it isn't, thank you. Thank you. I thought I had a timer going, didn't I? Alexa, you're letting me down. Oh, yes. Okay. Look at this baby. I'm going to put, put this to the side a second, so I want to show it to you. Can you see it? Okay, so now I'm going to do one more trick while it's still warm. Ha ha! I 
knew she didn't let me down. Thank you. Stop, Alexa. Alexa, stop. I have apricot jam with water mixed. About two tablespoons of apricot jam and about two tablespoons of cold water. I'm going to zap it into my microwave 30 seconds. This might answer your question. 30 no. servings is about 25 pounds, 6 ounces of chicken <laughs> dinner. Alexa, stop! I didn't even know I asked her a question, but that's okay. So, what I'm making here, guys, while the microwave is going, is called an apricot glaze. And what it does is apricot uh, will give that shine that we see on all the professional fruit tarts and pies out there, right? It's a beautiful finish because the apples are looking a little bit sad right now. They were, you know, baked, so they are a little, you know, on the dry side, though they got a little, uh, a beautiful golden color. And now while it's still warm, you want to brush it. So you warm it up. I like to strain it because the apricot jam has solids. So I'm just going to strain it. Get it out of the way. And if you let it sit on your countertop and it cools down, it's gonna gel again because apricots are very high in pectin, which is a natural thickener. I am all scientific today, aren't I? Stick around and you learn things. Pastry brush, again, I prefer silicone, and just kind of brush it and give it that beautiful glaze. And we'll come back to it later when I slice it, and you will see the shine that it gives. You probably can already see it. Oh, mm. I wish you could be here live with me, really live. Wouldn't you just love that? I'm gonna put this aside because you're probably gonna need it again. Don't forget the glove, otherwise you burn yourself. And there you go. You could even sprinkle some sugar here and cinnamon at this point in time. I don't do it when it goes in the oven because the cinnamon gets bitter, but you could do sugar cinnamon while it's warm and it kind of melts. Okay, now back here. Oven still on. Back to our galette. Blueberry galette. So it helps that you sort of kind of measure everything. So this is obviously bigger than my parchment paper, but I'm gonna fold, remember. So it's important that you have some edges that you can fold around. Okay? So what I'm gonna do, I know it sounds a little complicated but I have my, my crazy techniques here. Is I'm gonna put this other one down. I'm gonna put my parchment paper on top, okay? And then, I'm just gonna flip this and lift the silicone mat, gently. You could do the, the rolling pin pick up too, but I actually find this easier. Look at how easy it peels off, right? Ta -da! And it gives me the perfect edge. You see, about about an inch or so. So I kind of cheat a little bit, and I just press it down slightly and pick it up. So I have a, a bit of a visual of the circle. And now. Just add the filling. Oh, mama, mama. You could do some toasted almonds on top for those who like nuts. I do. Um, you could add some fresh blueberries on, a, on top, which I think is what I'm gonna do. So I have the, the cooked, blue, cooked blueberries on the bottom. And I'm just going to pick up a handful of fresh blueberries and kind of sprinkle them on top. Cool. Where did my towel go? Nowhere to the sink. Get another one. So now comes the fold for the galette, very similar to the fold of the empanada. 
is the same deal with the pinch, with the crimping. So, but here you want to go over the food, okay? And then hold and fold, fold and fold, fold and fold, hold and fold. So you see, it doesn't really matter that your dough is not perfectly round because this is when you make it perfect. Look at that. And here you do want a crust, a crust um, because you want to enjoy that. Look at how pretty, isn't it? Ah, I love it. I'm not going to put the egg wash yet because, again, this is going to go in the refrigerator. And it's going to harden up a little bit. Okay. And now, last but not least, the last thing of the night or the afternoon is I have the ground beef that I sauteed very simply with olive oil, garlic, onion, salt, pepper, a little bit of a Worcestershire sauce. If you if you're allergic, you skip it. And then I have cut up olives here on the side. If you don't like olives, skip it. You could put capers, you could put bell peppers, you could do whatever you want, mushrooms. Remember just to cook everything. Kind of mix it. If it's empanadas, you would have the currants or you could have um, raisins, which my family entire is going to be making gagging noises, but I love raisins. Um, now, this is another one that is a super easy free form dish. It's a roll, right? Roll up, roulade. Oh, it's got several, several, several names to it. Everybody can see okay? I'm going to take the meat out of the way. This can go, bye bye. This can go, bye bye. So now, my rolling pin, open it. Now you're gonna go for, this dough is colder than the other, so you're gonna see that I'm gonna struggle in the beginning until it picks up the temperature. Um, you're gonna go for a rectangular shape, not round. So if you know you're gonna make some roulades, you could pre uh, press your dough before you freeze it, or add in a sort of a log shape to make it easier when you open it, okay? I'm kind of gonna run my hand over it so the heat of my body helps open it. I'm almost done, I promise you. My uh, producer is checking the time and telling me I'm going over. But this is all good stuff. I want you to be able to know what to do with these products, you know, be, be creative. Um, especially at these times, right? I don't know about you, but I'm so f bored of the sameness over and over again. So good thing I can cook, right? Let's be creative. Let's do different things. Okay. So I'm getting there. Again, I want a rectangular shape. And if you have any questions, let me know. This is the time when I'm sort of working on it. Now this one, I did it a couple of weeks ago, but I used pre-boxed um, puff pastry dough, which is not the same as this. This is flaky, but it's not a puff pastry. Um, I did it with hearts of thumb, and it was awesome. I, you know, if you, if you ever want any of these fillings, the recipe for the fillings, I can send it to you separately. It's not a big deal. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop here. Because I kind of have a rectangular shape dish. No big, no blobs. No blobs. Okay. Now, this that I'm going to fold is the bottom part. So now you have to be smart because the things that you don't want to ooze out have to go first. So you can put cream cheese here, good old Philadelphia uh, room temperature. I'm just going to put that six cheese blend and I'm actually gonna use the rest that I have with the tomatoes because the moisture here is not gonna hurt it right now comes the beef so <clears throat> again fully cooked I'm gonna put, I need to put my hands in this stuff Sorry. 
So pick it up and kind of mount it in the middle. Right? I'm not gonna use the whole thing, which is fine. I can make empanadas later with the rest of the beef. Beautiful. Now, here you do wanna egg wash it because you wanna make sure that it doesn't come undone. So what you're gonna do is you can even use the mat to your advantage. So I don't know if you can see if Joe's, maybe we can bring the camera closer so you can see better, I don't know. I'm gonna use the mat to help me and kind of fold the dough over and then let it go and it's okay because it, it kind of glues back together, don't worry. Right? Now I'm gonna tuck these babies in and I'm gonna put a little bit of egg, just right here. I'm gonna tuck this baby in. A little bit of egg here, and tuck this side. And then I'm gonna bring this other side over. So far so good? Come on. You see how it gets warm really quickly? Um, egg. Good thing is the bottom, nobody's gonna see. <laughs> I'm gonna cut you off. Just fold it. A little bit of egg here. Fold it. Doesn't look that pretty, right? But that's okay, trust me. with the egg wash yet again this is gonna go in the refrigerator to rest everything bakes at 375 again 25 to 35 to 40 minutes what I do with this one is I brush with egg I put it in the oven halfway through I take it out I brush slightly with egg again I sprinkle parmesan and then I put it back if you do the parmesan from the beginning it will burn um, and it gets amazing isn't it pretty it is right I love it take all this mess out of the way. Swipe it down. You can tell what we're gonna have for dinner tonight, right? And dessert. I'm going to sprinkle some sugar just because we can. I had color sugar here. You could uh, have a dipping sauce, as I said, a chimichurri, a vinaigrette. Um, and just to show you, there you go. Can you see? I'm not going to go like those people that, you know, eat the stuff and go, mm, but it is amazing. Trust me. And I will eat it shortly. 
Any questions? Let me cut a piece of the pie. Let me cut a piece of the pie. You deserve to see it. Look at it. Isn't it pretty? You can serve with um, ice cream. You can serve with whipped cream. I prefer whipped cream actually. I'm not a big fan of ice cream with the with apple pie, but you can make it totally out of my This could be peach pie, plum pie, uh, the blueberry, strawberry. Just remember to lightly cook them to remove some of the moisture and then tighten them up with uh, cornstarch. Any questions? You guys are so quiet today. Huh? No? All right. So that concludes the event today. Um, I will, last week I made a mistake, I'm really sorry, I did not save the, um, the video, but today I'm gonna do better, so I'll save the video, um, and I'll probably upload it on my YouTube channel, I'll let you know. The recipe in a couple of hours from now, an hour, an hour and a half from now, will be posted on the blog, and as soon as it's posted on the blog, I'll put it on Instagram so you can know. But you, you can already go on Instagram on my link and um, on my blog link and click and you get the cheese bread um, recipe that's already there. Um, and that's about it. If you have any questions, um, let me know. Otherwise, thank you for joining. Bye, everybody. There's no elegant way for me to finish this, so... See you next time. I'll publish next week what we're going to make. If you have any suggestions or any requests, again, let me know. All right? Bye, everybody. Ciao, familia. I love you all. Stay safe. Bye.